going for charity easter edition 2015 we're here for our last game of the day in the round of 16 i'm your host calm leslie with me casting is tj azumo qt sanders we're going to be seeing chucky versus ecta in our final game of the day but uh tj we've seen some great games so far mm -hmm. yeah definitely um again we've seen a really good showcase of what decks are strong uh the the player that i've said at the beginning of the the series that i thought had the best lineup the best deck lineup uh, was the player that ended up winning the series so um it's it, a lot of it in conquest comes down to if you can build the right deck format it's it's sort of hard to adjust because there's a lot of new cards new cards are being released every week now with brm but uh it's it that's how it's played out so far chalky versus ecta coming up next ecta unknown player from punchline esports club which as we determined is not an exclusive french esports club like i mistakenly said earlier in the day but uh he is a french player um, I think that's a French flag. I'm colorblind though, could be an Italian flag. Who even knows? <laughs> I think I think it is a French. Is a French flag. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, for, from my non-colorblind position, I can tell you, is a French flag. Thank you for um, helping out the the disabled folks. <laughs> us colorblind. I, I like to do my bit. I like to do my bit. Thank you. Um, Chucky, we both players bringing warrior, which is very interesting. Mage, priest, and warrior for Chucky with Druid, Rogue, and Warrior for Ekta. Uh, Chucky's going to be opening a Warrior with Ekta on Druid. I spoke a little bit about Ekta earlier on. Uh, I got a chance to speak to him yesterday and find out a little bit more about him. He is uh, it's he is playing the Warrior, which he did say was his favorite class. He said that Gromash was his favorite card. Uh, and basically what I said about him is that, you know, him and his teammate Oleg, who's playing tomorrow, really see this as a huge opportunity. And for players like Chucky, who've maybe been around a long time, this isn't a, such a big a deal. And other players who've maybe been to the World Championships and things like that, this is just another tournament. But for them, this is their chance for a huge breakout moment. And uh, they're definitely determined not to let this slip by. So Ekta and Oleg, un being unknown players as well, is, is certainly interesting. Chucky's not going to be able to really researched his opponent that well and that does all come into come into play when you're building your conquest lineup mm -hmm. and uh chalky of course uh, at the beginning of the year announced that he'd be playing hearthstone full-time um and since then he's actually had some some really good runs uh he took uh what second at the Leg legendary series land finals yep. he was the first player to complete black rock spire on heroic and he twitched the race for twitch's race did he not Mountain. do the? Did he not do the second wing as well? I, I think it, either the first or second wing. I, um, I think it was definitely. Uh, it was definitely yeah. wasn't the first. I think it's the second and the third. So his ability to uh, theory craft what decks are going to be strong against uh, heroic PVE Hearthstone, top notch. One of the best players in the world at that specific discipline. Um, known for playing a lot of aggro, but. In this, he actually decided to bring some slower classes. He has he has a warrior, he has a priest, and he also has a mage. So he's shaking things up a bit. Having said that, this could be Grim Patron Warrior. It's, it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Definitely and a possibility. I wouldn't put it past Chucky to be the player who brought, who brought Grim Patron Warrior to a tournament first. Mm -hmm. yeah. If any player was going to do it, I think Chucky might be one of those players. But yeah, Priest is really interesting. It definitely won't be the Priest deck that he played last night in Blackrock because that was a specific one with all the big minions for the second wing. Uh, I definitely don't think he's going to be playing that. But uh, we're going to get into this game here. I say it's going to be game number one between Chucky and Ekta. Chucky on the Warrior versus Ekta on the Druid. Yeah, and um, Grip Ancient Warrior is, I think it's okay, uh, but it's really hard to play. And even its good matchups aren't really, really good. Um, but it looks oh, like Oh, this it is. is an aggro warrior. This is an aggro warrior. Battle Rage, Unstable Go World One. This is Grim Patron Warrior. I think it is. I called it. I called it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, Chucky, you said it. Chucky's the player um, that would bring it out. If any player is going to bring it out in the tournament, it is him. Now, I was saying this deck is is hard to play. It's 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 The combos aren't necessarily hard to understand. The hard part is knowing what... <clears throat> excuse me, when to play certain cards. Like, knowing when to hold on to certain pieces of your combo, like Defrothing Berserkers, or knowing when to throw them down on the board for pressure, or to, like, absorb damage so you don't die. Um, and it's it's really tough also when to decide when to actually play your Grim Patience. Like, should you play your Grim Patience right now that you have Despite Whirlwind, uh, but you don't have Warsong Commander to give him charge? Or should you wait till you actually can... Uh, spawn a couple more or put on more pressure with them 
really interesting uh, sort of uh, interaction between. And yeah, all the, all these cards are cards that you find exactly uh, card for card in that Grim Patron Warrior. Uh, Dr. Boom uh, usually runs Double Sludge Belcher. Uh, sometimes only runs one Raging Worgen. Um, sometimes runs two, but a lot of times that second Raging Worgen is uh, subbed out for Emperor Thorson. I know the deck hasn't been around for that long, but those are usually common substitutions. Yeah, so we could well see a very, very early Dr. Boom here. We saw the wild growth coming in. The Innervate is going to come out very soon as well. And uh, that'd be a pretty good way to respond, but I guess those bombs could be pretty nasty against Grim Patron. They could uh, actually do Chucky a lot of favors. One thing that Grim Patron Warriors do not run is Big Game Hunter. Uh, it's very common for most of the Grim Patron Warrior decks that I've seen to not run Big Game Hunter. So a turn five Dr. Boom actually could be very problematic. And uh, I'm not sure what he's going to decide to develop here. Um, he might just... He, oh, wow. Just going to armor up. So yeah, if Dr. Boom does come out this turn, he's going to have to like throw a weapon charge into it and execute it. It's going to be really rough. And there it comes. <laughs> Yep. Doctor for to do wild growth, so that's turn four. Wild growth into pass pass into innervate and uh, and Doctor Boom. He does have cool taskmaster, so he gets the the execute enabler. Yep, that's pretty important. That cool taskmaster could be really useful later on. Hmm. Yeah. Cool Taskmaster is also a card that can be used to help combo with Grim Patron later on. You can get an extra Grim Patron, give a, it'll have charge plus five attack, summon an extra one, but you, you have to do this. You can't leave the Doctor Boom up for uh, for an extra turn uh, because that's damage that you can't afford to take. Unlike Control Warrior, there's not as much life gain in Grim Patron Warrior, so um, a lot of uh, decks that pressure Grim Patron Warrior struggles with uh, unless their pressure comes from small drops like Paladin where you can get huge Grim Patron combos later on in the game. Yeah, so the Thorison coming down is going to give uh, some pretty cheap Druid of the Claws and Sludge Belchers here and that could be that's some pretty nice value. It's not necessarily what he wants as the targets for it, but there's the Whirlwind, so leaving the Warstone Commander and the Raging Worgen, we could see some things start to come in the next couple of turns. No Grim Patron so far. Still waiting on that making an appearance, and that's uh, that is the problem with some of these decks, like um, the Hobgoblin decks as well. They're they're very very weak decks unless you can draw specific cards, and that is what makes them weak. Yeah, that's very true. And uh, he does have a couple pieces of the combo right now. Um, the main goal of Grim Patient Warrior is just to buy time until you draw into a piece, some piece of your combo. There's actually a couple different combos that you can use to win the game. Um, one being Warsong Commander with big Frothing Berserkers, which is sort of, um, or Raging Worgen as well, which is sort of like uh, the old classic way for those aggro combo warriors, Math Warrior or whatever, to, to win. Uh, Grim Page Warrior kind of makes it more consistent, makes the one turn kill or makes the combo warriors a little more consistent because you add one extra combo in there that you can use to put a lot of pressure and win games. So he's looking at the Druid of the Claw here. He's just going to match the Taunt, which I guess is pretty good. It's a slightly more powered Taunt than the initial body of the Sludge Belcher. Thought he might have gone for a charged version to get through the Belcher, but that would have been pretty, pretty wasteful. So he's just going to go with the uh, the, the Taunt form. And Chuck doesn't really have a lot of great plays here. Uh, he can develop the Death Bite, which is pretty good, uh, because next turn he'll be able to... Um, get a battle, get a pretty decent battle rage play if he's able to get another damage minion on the board. Uh, also, he has a good turn seven play in playing Doctor Boom. Uh, but battle rage right now, um, probably smarter just just so he can get the. Well, there is the Grim Patron. Ooh, he's got Grim Patron, um, Whirlwind, and Warson Commander, and Despite Charge. So next turn he can hold on to Despite play Dr. Boom, and then the following turn, he can make for some huge plays with Grim Patron. With Warsong Commander and Grim Patron. Uh, but he can't... 9 mana is sort of that sweet spot. 
because you can play the whirlwind as well yeah it's it's so difficult to get these combos because it is a five mana card it's really difficult to get that but yeah as you say the war sun commander grim patron whirlwind combo is pretty good he does have that raging worgen as well so maybe a turn seven combo you don't want to play your combo pieces too early, uh, just yeah. because uh, if you use your first Warsong Commander and it gets killed, and your other Warsong Commander is in the bottom of your deck, a lot of times you don't have the damage to be able to close out the game. Oh. Okay, so a Doctor Boom this turn is most likely the play. And then next turn he can make some huge plays with Grimpatron. Um, this turn, it's a little bit too premature, just because he can't play the Warsong Commander. If this was turn eight, he'd be able to play Warsaw Commander, clear off the Sludge Belcher, which would spawn another Grim Patron, throw his fresh Grim Patron into the or uh, into the slime, which would give him another one, enrage the other one, which would give him another one, and allow him to to clear into the the Druidic Claw. But he's one man off from being able to do all that. So um, I like just playing Doctor Boom here. Or, yeah, I think so. Or maybe even. No, yeah, Dr. Boom turn seven. I was going to say he might be able to make some plays with Acolyte of Pain, but he really does not want to give up that charge of Despite because next turn is going to be that turn where he starts to develop all those... Uh, de develop those Grim Patrons. He's going to bring everybody the, in here. Is it Grim Patrons? Is that the plural? Grim Patri? I don't know. I think it's Patrons. I guess it's Patrons. Patrons, yeah. Patrons. <laughs> Grim Patron. Yeah, I think that might be it. Yeah, Grim it's definitely... Patron. Who's it that keeps saying Grim Patron? I can't remember. I don't know, but it's definitely Grim Patrons. Oh, that Black Knight getting super value there on that 1 2 slime. <laughs> I guess in a deck like this, it's hard to get any value at all from the Black Knight, so we'll take it where you can get it. Warrior very low on health at this point. Oh, the second in a rage. Okay, so this is a lot of damage right now. Um,. It's really hard to calculate. I, he doesn't have lethal because he, he can't play the whirlwind. If he could play the whirlwind, there might actually be a chance for him to lethal. But, um, actually, hold on. I no, I don't think it is. <laughs> don't think it is. But he's gonna he's gonna be able to uh, clear the slime here. Throw one grim patron. He. I would throw one Grim Patron in now, so that way he has room for all, all the fresh Grim Patrons that he's going to be able to spawn. Oh, that's true, yeah. Um, yeah, see, that's the that's a good play there. And now he'll be able to uh, spawn another one from the slime. He's going to want to put that seven damage onto... Yep. Wow, this is uh, this is pretty crazy. This combo deck may actually work out. Yeah. And, oh, it doesn't get the kill there. I think he was just making room. He wants as many Grim Patrons as he can possibly spawn. All right, so he's going to get six here. So he's going to have five Grim Patrons on the board. Mm -hmm. And four of them are going to be able to attack right now. They can actually... Yeah, he can spawn... He can refresh one. No, he don't, yeah, because he doesn't get that one there. So he yeah. trades away. And actually, suddenly, this is looking pretty scary. The swipe... It doesn't do anything because you can't swipe this board because no. whatever you're going to clear with the swipe... He's going to summon two more Grim Patrons, so you're, you're not oh, going to no. take away... Actually, so he'll be taking away 12 power and adding 6 power. So he'll actually be taking away a little bit of power off the board, and he'll be able if to you... take out the Warsong Commander, but it's still... You're still almost dead. I think if you kill the Boom... If you kill the Warsong Commander and then swipe the Boom... If you kill the Warsong Commander with the Keeper and then swipe the Boom, you end up with 12 damage on the board, so you kind of stay alive i'm not sure what i don't think there's another play like i think that's the only play yeah. you have to kill the warzone commander you have to take the seven damage off the board you can take two of the grim patron damage off the board i think he can uh afford to silence one of the grim patrons swipe the dr boom and hero power into the warzone commander because then he'd be left with nine power on board and okay uh, yeah and he'd still be at Okay, and then he can keep this way. He can keep her the Doctor Boom. I think this takes the most power off. Yeah, he's left. Yeah, with, okay. yeah he's good. This this way he's gonna be left with six power. So. Yeah. 
It feels a bit like Countdown. I don't know if you've ever seen Countdown. It's a math. It's a show with letters and numbers. You have to get as close as possible to the math number with the numbers you're given. I was quite far off. You got a little bit closer, but X I got closest <laughs> of all. There, we'll take six damage. He's still going to be a little bit afraid because he's still within combo range, even if he armors up here. Um, but uh, Ekta only has one card in his hand. So he'd have to have one piece of the combo and then draw into the second yeah. piece of the combo to have any chance of winning. Because here he can actually throw a Grim Patron into the Keeper of the Grove, spawn a fresh one, then Whirlwind, clearing off the Keeper and spawning two more Grim Patrons. And, and if you throw down his... Frothing, yeah, Berserker, that's... And crazy. Acolyte of Pain, you can draw a card and have a huge Frothing Berserker on the board all at the same time. He's not going to go for the Frothing here. Okay, Sludge Belcher. Oh, Sludge Belcher, perfect pickup. Yeah. Um, he he wanted to draw a card with as much mana remaining as possible. So if he did draw into something that changed his play, it'd be better. So that's, that's the strongest play there. And that's going to be game. There's... <laughs> He can innovate out of shade, but it's not going to do anything. So, Grim Patron Warrior, in its debut for Chalky, is going to take game one. That's pretty cool to see. Well, sadly, that means we're only going to get to see one one uh, game of this. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll see Grim Patron Warrior from Ekta. He did see Gromash was his favorite card, so I'm assuming we'll see Control Warrior. Well, but, Gromash uh, is running Grim Patron Warrior, so there is a possibility. That is true. Uh, we may well see it, but we'll have to wait and find out. But he does still have the Druid up for Ekta. And uh, Chucky with that Mage and Priest. Now, if he's running Freeze Mage, this is a pretty tough lineup for him, potentially. Mm -hmm. I, um, think, I think it actually probably is Freeze Mage, because when Chucky runs Mage, it's usually Freeze Mage. Uh, I don't I don't know if I've seen him play Mech Mage, or Mech Mage in a tournament environment. Um, I have seen him play Fatigue Mage before, but that's not, not really a, a viable option here. Oh, okay, so... Ekta switched to Rogue, and Chalky went with Mage. So if this is Freeze Mage, <clears throat> and Chalky can find a win here, then that'll be really good for him. Yeah, well, we're going to have to see what variation of Mage this is, as you say. And, uh, I mean, who knows what Ekta's bringing? This could be a completely different Rogue as well. So we'll see in just a second here when we get into it. Yeah. What these guys are going to go for. He wants to pick up a victory with the Mage before he has to face off against the Warrior. Uh, which is actually a pretty big deal. He wants to dodge the warrior at all costs because if he gets to a point yeah. where the only deck he has left to win with is mage and he still has to go through warrior. Uh, uh, yeah, that's really difficult for him. Really difficult, really difficult. So, All right, well, let's get into this match here. It's freeze mage. I'll bring the mulligans. Uh, as we can see, the freeze mage against oh, the rogue. Yeah. yeah, okay, now we can see it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah. it's freeze mage. <laughs> yeah, if you couldn't tell from what's in the, the mulligan there, it's Freeze Mage. Yeah. And it looks like a fairly standard rogue from Ekta from what we can see there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not really any different variations of rogue that you can make right now. Oil rogue is... You can substitute some cards in. You can run one oil. You can run any variation of two Earthen Ring Farseers, one Earthen Ring Farseer, an Earthen Ring Farseer, and an Antique Heal Bot. Uh, you can run one sprint with a Dr. Boom. You can run two sprints. You can run two sprints with a Dr. Boom. There's not many variations you can make for it, uh, but Emperor Thorsan, uh, these two decks are a prime example of cards that Emperor Thorsan had a, a really big effect on. Uh, cards that are classes that usually have a lot of cards in their hand um, that rely on big combos, like Freeze Mage, Oil Rogue, uh, Midrange, Fast Druid, car, uh, decks like that. Yeah, absolutely. We see the Thorsan there for Ekta, which is, we've seen do a lot of work for Rogue. It can really, really create huge turns. Uh, Explosive Sheep, that's a card I'm I'm never really sure about in Freeze Mage. I feel like I get it's, it is definitely a tech card, obviously. Things like Call of Cold come into that same slot. Um, I'm never convinced of Explosive Sheep. I'm not sure in the, if there are, how many matchups you actually get to use it in. Mm -hmm. Zoo <laughs> is a good one. But even sometimes against Zoo, it can be kind of weak. Uh, it's pretty strong against, against gang boss. Yeah, it's pretty weak against him, gang boss. Yeah. And those decks, that are, those aggressive decks, uh, unless they overextend, which you would hope people wouldn't really do at this level. Yeah. Uh, they can just refill the board. So. 
I'm never, I'm not, I'm never entirely convinced, but it does definitely uh, have some values a lot of the time. So it's the one of those, one of those tech cards, those swing cards in the Freeze Mage deck that is really just a question of taste, I guess. Right now he's thinking about whether or not he can afford to delay his arcane intellect and get greedy and draw out of his acolyte of pain before it gets traded into. But um, playing arcane intellect on turn is actually really important. So. He's still going to get a draw from the Acolyte. Not the worst thing in the world, but uh, it most likely will get traded into here. Uh, the Rogue in this matchup really wants to pressure. They want to make a huge turn. They want to force the Mage to play defensively as soon as they possibly can. So it's it's not... Um, it, it's a pretty normal thing for Rogues to just start piling on the damage early on, throwing spells at the face, throwing dagger and oil on really early just to apply as much pressure as, as possible to make the that mage play defensively so that's one of the right ways that rogue can win this matchup yeah and these minions are not too much of a problem here for the freeze mage but they're certainly a little bit annoying as you say Ecto looking to put the pressure on it's uh it's not i guess the explosive sheep this could be a turn for it here um you could hero power it but doesn't feel entirely useful, but that's what he's going to go for. Just to clear out this board. Yeah. That's about the best use you're going to possibly find for that card in this matchup. Yeah. And there's a low Theb. We're going to see Ooh. when Ekta decides to play that. That's such a crucial card in this matchup. Yeah, you have to play it now just for just for the tempo, just for the damage. Start applying pressure. Um, usually in most matchups, that's a card that you save for like post-Alexstrasza. But once you get mm -hmm. to the phase where you're getting Alex Strazit as a rogue, you, you've most likely already lost the game. So a lot of times you don't have a chance to even play Lothab later on. That is true. It's fair enough. We're going to see the Doomsayer. We could well see a sap on the Doomsayer, I think. I think that's a pretty pretty strong play. Or he might just deal with it. Um, he can he can Emperor Thorson and then backstab throw the Lothab in. Because um, if he plays, if he throws back the Doomsayer, then he knows he has, he has to deal with it eventually. Um, when his creatures are frozen and he doesn't have any other way to deal with it, I think that's when the sap uh, should come out. Yeah. With the backstab in hand as well, backstab, not a card you're going to get a huge amount of use of in this matchup. Yeah. So yeah, you're thinking right. Backstab, yeah, that's what we're going to see here. And he's going to deal with this Doomsayer, and he's got two 5-5 five, five bodies on the board. That could be pretty threatening, especially if he had an oil in hand, um, which he doesn't. But <laughs> does have prep sprint, and it's a, a prep zero mana six deadly sprint. poison. <laughs> the ultimate combo card. It's pretty nasty. Do you know, I I, I read a very interesting thread on Reddit the other week because the thing you can you occasionally do learn things about the way Hearthstone works and learning that uh, cards do actually get negative mana costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did not know that. I'd never experienced that before. Yeah. So even so, you know, the deadly poison. In fact, that prep now costs minus one. Yeah. And if a low feb were to come down, it would go up to four mana rather than five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. Even though it only displays a zero, it's kind of one of those weird little quirks that you don't really know about. Yeah. Yep. Pretty good pickup from the SI seven there. It's going to be able to clear out this mad scientist. So he may just opt to do, uh, to develop the, even the violet teacher and use the deadly poison to clear this. Has a, it definitely has a lot of options. Yeah, I like the Violet Teacher play the best. Uh, Pavic Shredder, it's the stickiest, so uh, if your board does get clear the next turn, you're still going to have a creature available to maybe combo oil with if you draw into it, but uh, this puts like the most the most amount of power and threat on the board right now, with the state of the board right now. I still got a lot of a lot of health to chunk through, and Chalky's got a lot of uh, ways to buy time with both Blizzards already. And Ice yeah. Barrier, so... Those Detroit. blizzards. Those blizzards. We could just see a blizzard here. It wouldn't. I wouldn't put it past him. Even, I know you want to save the Ice Lances, but we could perhaps even see Blizzard Ice Lance here to clear probably the Teacher to stop any of those crazy big turns. Yeah. Is an option, or you can just stall it out with the blizzard. Buy yourself some time. Chucky playing the Freeze Mag. Yes. Yes, the uh, fr the freeze mag. Didn't know there was a new class added to Hearthstone. 
There it is. It's actually just uh, it's a class that Hyped designed. It's the uh, it's short for Magazzini. George Hyped Magazzini. That was a joke just for you, TJ. Thank you. So I appreciate, appreciate it. it. I really do. All right, well, uh, he's taking the time earlier on to develop, but Chucky has a lot of ways to stall, but he doesn't really have any ways to sort of apply pressure. He hasn't drawn to Alex Charles yet. Uh, hasn't drawn to Archmage Antonitis. Um, he does have some burn in his hand with Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance, but he doesn't have any of the heavier hitting spells like Fireball, like Pyroblast. Uh, so um, he's really going to have to stall for a while with these AoE spells in order to uh, hopefully buy some buy himself some time to draw into these these bigger threats. Well, he's going to prep Eviscerate Face just to get a giant Edwin Ooh. Van Cleef. Well, that's an 8-8 eight, eight Edwin Van Cleef. It's a full board with a lot of damage here. Too bad uh, it'll be frozen for the next infinity turns. Yeah. Double Blizzard Flame Strike is the ultimate counter to the 8-8 eight, eight <laughs> Van Cleef. <laughs> yeah, that's that feels pretty strong, not going to lie. It's pretty strong. There we go. Card draw is exactly what he needed at this point, but he needs to Blizzard first. And then next turn, Blizzard again to buy himself time to Arcane Intellect. Because he can't really afford to use Arcane Intellect this turn. Because he has, oh man, 16, 20, at least 21 damage staring at him next turn. If he Blizzard doesn't Blizzard teacher. here, yeah. I don't think he even has to. He can just ping face if he really wants to. Ping face is an obvious giveaway that he does have more AoE. Yeah, can I, he can actually ping the uh, Edwin and then ping Flame Strike next turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's Yeah, that's definitely the optimal play. Yeah. And this oh. is this isn't a huge dead giveaway either that he doesn't have extra AoE. Pinging the highest health creature is usually the standard uh, freeze mage freeze, freeze mage tactic. Yeah. Because if we can see Ecta's reaction to this here, it's so frustrating to play against freeze mage sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I said earlier. You feel like you're not really playing against your opponent. The opponent is playing against their own deck. Your opponent's playing solitaire. Exactly. Yeah, your opponent's. Playing... You're, you're you're trying to you're trying to play along, but it's just it's not working. It's like you're trying to play against them without them knowing. Like, oh, okay. I'm just gonna SI seven face here to try and push this damage in. No ice blocks up yet. He does have anti Keelbot, and he does have Sprint to refill his hand. So he has answers to just about anything that Chalky can do. Hmm. Emperor Thor's end, but if he uses it, it's just going to get killed the following turn. But at the same time, he could get... It's still pretty decent value. Two-man arc and intellect. Um, being able to use Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance for one mana is pretty strong play. That's pretty, that's pretty strong. What's that? That's... Uh... 11 damage for one mana. Mm -hmm. That's a one mana Pyroblast ping. Yeah, it's pretty strong. <laughs> but pretty strong. at the same time, if he just plays Emperor here, he would have to most likely Frostbolt something just in order to safely protect his block. So I, I think that Arcane Intellect might be the better play here and then using Blizzard as sort of an emergency tool. Uh, he could also Blizzard and then play Mad Scientist and ping, ping something off. Which, ooh, and using one of the ice lances. Yeah, using the ice lance is interesting. It's uh... he's used both ice barriers though, so that's actually really smart. Because Mad Scientist mm -hmm. could be a flex card later on in order to draw the last ice block out of his deck as sort of an emergency tool. So right now, if he plays the Mad Scientist with an ice block already up, his Mad Scientist isn't going to pull anything out. So there's not really a point in playing it. Earthen Ring's a pretty good pickup. Bring him back up to 30 health. Yeah. And it's not a big enough threat to really man mandate any of the, the things that Chucky has to deal with in his hand, but this does give him the space to play Arcane Intellect and indeed to play Thorison. Yeah. He's been pretty deep in his deck and he still hasn't drawn into... He's going to Frostbolt. That's... Yeah. I like this better. This protects his Thorison a little bit more. The Arcane Intellect isesn't going anywhere. He's still gonna draw those two, be able to draw those two cards. Now he's just gonna be able to do it for less mana. So, this is the best way to protect not only his damage from his ice block, but also protect his Emperor Thor's hand. Oh. Essentially, give it taunt. 
Let's see, what do you think about, about the Violet Teacher into Fan Eviscerate? Cycle that fan. It's not going to get a huge amount of value. Yeah. And build up a Violet Teacher. Yeah, so that's what he's going to do. He's going to draw a card off the Fan of Knives. Deadly Poison. Two Flurries in hand as well. He needs time to be able to build up those daggers and use those flurries, though. Um, yeah, I, I don't see why he wouldn't eviscerate here. And I would even go ahead and go so far as to... Well, I don't know. I don't know if he wants to equip the Deadly Poison. The Deadly Poison could be an activator for Tinker Sharp Soil the following turn. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so holding on to that might be the better choice. Because he's not guaranteed a target to be able to sap. Which would be the other activator that he would use. <laughs> If, if the sap could be pretty crucial here, like you said, the Mad Scientist could be used to pull that final block from the deck. And if Ekta's able to put in a big Blade Flurry here to maybe finish Chucky off, actually being able to sap the Mad Scientist to avoid that block coming up could be pretty crucial in the end. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if that ends up being a big heads up play. But there we go. We have Alex Ross and Power Blast finally coming into hand for Chucky. Yeah. But unfortunately, just a turn too late on the Alex Straza to be able to play it this turn. Oh, man. So there's really not much damage facing the board uh, for him to Frost Ova, but he sort of has to. Uh, just because he can't afford to have his block popped this turn. The worst time to have your block popped is right before the turn that you would normally Alex Straza, because that gives you almost no chance to win. Um... So Frost Ovaing now, even though there's not too much power facing on the board, is the better play. Next turn, he can Alex Straza. The following turn opens up opportunities for him to draw into that last bit of burn that he'll need. <laughs> he's almost out of cards here, Ekta. So, so Chucky, Chucky should know exactly what he has. Pretty much. He knows he's not seen any Flurry. He knows he hasn't seen either Tinker's Oil, if there is two. He's just going to flurry here, I think, just to build up an extra apprentice on the board and, and to be able to clear a new dagger. And two damage, yeah. He's trying to put out as much damage as possible. Oh, oh, flame strike off the top. Yeah. I think you need to... Oh, man. Yeah, you have to do that. You have to get to a point where you can play the Alexstrasza and buy as much time as you can to draw into damage. Because right now, if he plays Alexstrasza, there's no guarantee that he'll win next turn. Because he'd right. have to be able to play Power Blast and his other Burn Spells two turns in a row. Does he have enough damage to pop it here? I don't think so, no. How much damage does he even have? He has two... He has 12 damage. And the only minion left as a, ta as a target for Tinker is, is the Antique Heal Ball. Yeah, I think... I think, he's out of, I think he's out of steam here. <laughs> that Flame Strike off the top might have just won Chalky this game because... Yep. There's he, nothing left. Yeah, if he develops this this anti killbot right now to try and get something to combo with the oil, he won't have that anti killbot for after the Alex Straza. So he sort of has to go all in. Ooh, and he's th I, th this could be the only play for him to make. Yeah, uh, I think you're right. Because this turn he's going to play Alex Straza. The next turn the block will be popped, but then he should have drawn to enough burn by that point, or be able to because this play play. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's sitting at 30 health, but he could well be dead here, to be honest. This is really one of the... This is this is Freeze Mage right here. This is a perfect illustration of another Freeze Mage scenario, which is you just... The mage just outlasts you. Yeah. Uh, I've actually... Uh, one of the players was a really big advocate of Freeze Mage's Firebat. Um, I've spoken to him about this about this deck a lot. Is that just there's so many different ways to win, and just fatiguing your opponent out is one of those ways. And the fireball and the antique heal ball. I think Chucky realizes that that's the last minion. Yeah. Yep, X is going to go ahead and concede. <laughs> Such a good heads up play from Chucky there to be like, to be as you said, counting the cards, yeah. knowing what's left, and just being. I'm pretty sure if I fireball this, I don't need that fireball anymore. Yeah, he's thinking. Yeah. Okay, he's got four cards in his hand, no cards in his deck, so. He knows that one of them's a blade flurry. Most likely, two of them are saps. And if he was paying attention, he could assume that the last one was backstab. So, a uh, really great heads up play. Not even needing to Alex Strauss in that situation, just because there's no cards left. The rogue doesn't have any yeah. damage left. Even if he blade flurried, he'd have to auto attack with his dagger twice in a row, um, just to be able to get through. And 
just goes ahead and concedes out. So Chucky's one win away. Yep. With that, and that priest is the deck that's left. And I guess if you're Chucky, doesn't necessarily feel too confident with this priest. He was saying on Twitter that uh, he said, watch me come play priest in a tournament for the first time and probably lose. This is the position you want to be in. He has three chances to get a win with this. And you'd think a player of Chucky's caliber would be able to get one win out of three. We will see. It's going to be the rogue of Ekta again. It's a very strong deck. But we'll see what priest what this priest build is from Chucky. You were saying you'd seen a little glimpse of this priest deck on stream? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was playing... Um, I think he called it Mind Control Priest, where he was just playing like Double Shrink Meister, Double Cabal Shadow Priest, Double Shadow Madness. Um, pretty much every tool that you could use to take your opponent's creatures, he was playing. So, we'll have to see if it works out for him. Oh, and Chucky... Oh, well, I guess we you can't really see that yet. Um, well, we'll get into it and we'll see what the game is going to be like. Second. It's going to be game number three of Chaki versus Ekta, Priest versus Rogue. Okay. Here we are, we can see. Pretty good start for Chaki with the Injured Blade Master and the Power Word Shield. Yeah, yeah he's going to go ahead and keep those. Ekta, just so stoic. This entire time he's been playing, he has not <laughs> hasn't moved. moved. Hasn't moved an inch. Looks like he's outside as well, which is an interesting tactic. Yeah. You can play Hearthstone on your phones now. You could play Hearthstone from anywhere. I'm this not is absolutely true. I'm surprised we haven't seen any people playing from the toilet yet. I, I did say when the, the mobile came out, I said, how long will it be before some tournament gets sponsored by like HTC or something? Mm -hmm. And uh, and all the players have to play on HTC phones. Well, there are some Hearthstone teams that are sponsored by it. So I guess that's as close as you can possibly be. Yeah, this is a pretty good start. Circle of Healing would be like the ultimate start. <laughs> um, but... Uh, this is pretty good as well. Being able to have something to place on the board early, uh, being able to have that Northshire Cleric out there early, or better yet, both Northshire Clerics out there early. Yeah, I mean, you do say never go full Northshire, but at this point, it feels like it's not too bad. I mean, what can Chucky do here? What can Agatha do here? Could he? Could he? Does he sap the one five? Is that a thing? No, he's just gonna have to dagger up and pass. Yeah. No and thought steal. That's not a bad turn three when your opponent's played absolutely nothing to this point. Mm. That's a reasonable thought steal. Eviscerate's good because it can help you deal with your opponent's Azure Drake, which in all other cases would be mm. really tough for Priest to deal with. This matchup still, though, is very, very much in favor of the Rogue. Even if they don't get an explosive start, even if the Priest does have a good start like this, unless you're applying large amounts of pressure early on, which two Narshar clerics aren't going to do, then the Rogue's just in a great spot. They they want to be able to uh, just buy a lot of time. They want you to play really slow so they can draw into their big combo pieces. And they want... They want to get to that point where they can just play Azure Drake and Pod Shutter on Curve and have it not be able to be dealt with. Well, there is the Injured Blade Master. He's going to be able to play that with the Circle. So the Circle of Healing comes out. He's going to be able to play Blade Master Circle, draw a card. I think when you're Thought Stealing against a Rogue, to be honest, any Thought Steal that pl that brings you two usable cards, I would say is really good. <laughs> That's true, yeah, yeah. Rogue is one of the weakest classes to play Thought Steal against because there are so many things. You mean Blade Flurry, Deadly Poison, and Tinkers. That's what six cards in the deck that are completely dead if you thought steal them. Yeah, it's a really good point. Really good point. So if you if you can, the fact that he drew a shredder, which is really good value, and eviscerate, which is good damage, is uh, that's pretty good. And it's always nice to be able to get minions off thought steal that are good, and that you can then play, and your opponent doesn't know have come from thought steal. Yeah. Oh, so you haven't man. yet added the uh, the unstable portal kind of graphic where you can see this came from unstable portal. This came from thought steal. The Violet Teacher Prep Sap, one of the strongest turn four plays that you can make. One of the strongest uh, tempo gaining turn four plays that you can make as a rogue. And it's gonna well, be that's able to both the North Shires done. Oh, yeah. This is pretty solid stuff here uh, from Ecto. Yeah, this is really hard for Chucky. I mean, I guess you Sludge Belcher, but you think the Sludge Belcher probably dies. Yeah, you're just throwing it out there to try and stall. I mean, he does have a way to... Mm, the only thing I can see him doing is trying to clear off something with Eviscerate here. 
and then maybe Circle of Healing the Injured Blade Master, since he knows that Sap is gone now. At least one of the Saps is gone now. So yeah, this play I think is a little bit better because you're you're being proactive. Uh, you're you're clearing off a threat. You're also building up a strong board instead of just putting a Sludge Belcher out there to try and buy some time. So. Yeah, it's it's not bad. I, I do like the developing the injured blade master because it's just so difficult for really any class to deal with. Um, it's in that sweet spot, which just the stats are distributed so well. If you can heal it, there's a 15 mana mind control there. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, probably the highest mana cost I've ever seen, apart from I guess molten giants when they first come out. Yeah, this is a super vulnerable play. Um... He's forced to play the Sylvanas here just to try and salvage what he has on the board. And he actually clears one of the 1-1s one off just to make it more likely for him to steal something better of better use with Sylvanas. Yep. Fan of Knives. Going to take care of the rest of this Blade Master. Spawn on the 1-1. One one. And is he going to... If it's read the Sylvanas, it's gonna try and it's gonna be a, a sixty percent chance that he'll steal one one. So, um, and even if he doesn't, uh, well, yeah, it's most likely that he's gonna steal it. If he steals Vile Teacher, that's really good, actually. Oh, gets <laughs> oh, there's the one one. He's still gonna lose his load though, but I guess that's not the worst thing in the world because uh, you're constantly getting value out of out of Vile Teacher. Really hard for priests to be able to remove effectively without using like Shadowward Pain or like Shadow Man is into Lothab, which he does not have that, as we can see. Yeah, this is uh, it's a pretty tough spot for the priest. He's going to go ahead and make that trade. Sludge Watch are going to come down now. And uh, the rogue very much biding its time. Has some good minions like Azure Drake and Pilot and Shredder to come. The Violet Teacher still in play. And actually, the fan's pretty good here. But we're going to see the Eviscerate to clear this uh, Sludge Belcher. And again, just building up these 1-1s, one which are going to be really good to clear this slime. So yeah. just a really methodical approach from the Rogue here. It's, as you say, not the explosive start. Didn't draw what it needed to to win, to be really explosive and, and get a blowout performance. But just this really slow, methodical play is going to really pay dividends for the Rogue. This is a pretty much a textbook game of why Rogue is just super strong. Again, like you said, he didn't have the the most explosive start. He didn't have the best hand in the world, but it's just so hard for Priest to do much because this is exactly what kind of style a Rogue wants to play. They want to get huge value out of creatures like, like Violet Teacher. Uh, they want to be able to sort of like put you on a clock and force you to play defensively the whole game. Oh man, yep. this is... And he's going to be able to clear it off with the Deadly Poison as well. If he so chooses, spawn another the 1-1. One, one. That Violet Teacher itself, just the 1-1s one, from that Violet Teacher have just caused so many issues. Yeah, I mean, not being able to kill that Violet Teacher. I I don't I don't even know what he does to kill this Violet Teacher at this point. It doesn't appear to, have to run Shadowward Pain. Eventually you're just going to mind control it. Just get it out of the way. <laughs> just uh, fine, come over here. Stay out of my way. Yeah. And I don't know if he's going to survive that long, to be honest, with the the uh, Deadly Poison and the Tinker's Oil. No, I think he's dead next turn, regardless of what he does. Uh, even if he steals one of the 1-1s one -ones and heals up, he'll be at 15. Uh, the Tinker, Sharp Sword Oil, Deadly Poison... Um, as long as the Sharp Sword Oil doesn't go onto one of the 1-1s, one then he's okay. Well, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> those, not are, bad. those are pretty good cards, but it's a little bit too late for that. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, he's just going to play the Thoris, and I think he realizes he's probably dead. Yeah. And he did Night Mana Mind Control. Yeah. He's back. He, he didn't heal up, so uh, that's lethal no matter where the, the Tinker Sharp Soto goes. He only did the t Tinker Sharp Soto on the weapon uh, for that to be lethal, I do believe. And it does go on to 4 4. But again, it doesn't matter. So, uh, Ekta starting his comeback and again that's a pretty good matchup for him chalky said hey come watch so you can see me play priest in a tournament for the first time and lose and uh, we'll have to see if he's going to be able to pick up a win with that he's got two more chances 
He does. He's the druid and the warrior left. And uh, which of these two decks do you think is most likely for Chucky to get a win with the priest on? It's hard to say. Maybe yeah. warrior, depending on how that warrior deck is built and depending how many threats Chucky is actually running. Uh, if Chucky is going with the the more the less big threat priest and the more like reactive mind controlly cards like double shadow madness double cabal uh he might have some trouble because he won't be able to match um threat for threat with the with the, the warrior um but we'll see well while we're waiting for this this potentially final game of the series game four of the best of five to uh to get set up let me remind you a couple of things that were going on obviously you can donate to child's play for this charity this tournament all 100 percent of your donations will go to charity uh, there's a link in the Twitch description below. You can also go to the website, kingwin.net, and find out about that as well. There's also a giveaway going on for 20 Hearthstone packs. That's also on the website, and there's a command in the chat. And remember to watch the KPL on Tuesdays and Wednesdays as well, uh, bring you the biggest league in Hearthstone. So much going on here at Kingwin, one of the most active Hearthstone tournament organizers uh, of anywhere at the moment, putting on... I think it's what three days this week of uh, Hearthstone. Well, so five days this week of Hearthstone tournament action. It's basically you get a weekend off from Hearthstone from Kingwin this week, and uh, every other day, five days a week Hearthstone. Yeah, and for that pack command, you can type exclamation mark packs, and uh, of course, make sure you spam it because everybody knows that spamming a command increases your chances. That is of, true. Of uh, of getting those packs. So exclamation mark packs will bring you to that link for the 20 pack giveaway. And remember, we're going to be back here tomorrow for the second half of the round of eight. And then we're going to be taking on the uh, round of the second half of the round of 16, sorry. And then the quarterfinals are going to be coming tomorrow. And we are starting tomorrow. And I believe 1.30 Central European time. Yeah, it's going to be believe. like 10 hours of games tomorrow. It's going to be like some really great, great stuff tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to have eight best of fives coming out tomorrow from some Ooh. of the best players in the world. It's so, easy. Uh, yeah, that's going to be great. And we already know we're going to have Jab versus Dog. And the winner of this game is going to take on Hyped in our round of eight. But we also have Tides of Time versus D2 is our first game tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that one very much. Uh, Muzzy versus Gara, Tice versus Sho, and Forston versus Oliak. But uh, we're going to see Chucky on his priest here against the Warrior of Ekta. And we're going to get into that game uh, as soon as we can and bring that to you. And it's going to be very interesting to see if Chucky can get a win with this priest. So we see the Acolyte of Pain. Uh, we also saw the Sylvanas. Suggests this is probably a more traditional warrior from Ecta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not the Grim Patron warrior. Sadly. Uh, this is usually a pretty slow matchup, but it also can turn into be a pretty big slugfest. Um, Harrison Jones, not really going to help you that much unless he thought steals a weapon, which is the dream if you're a warrior player in this matchup. All spells, right off the bat, for Chalky, uh, which I guess isn't that big of a deal against Warrior. You really don't really need you don't need to pressure that much. So we see double shadow or death in the hand for Chalky. That's pretty slow. Oh, double circle as well. <laughs> that's really slow. Yeah, that's rough. That's really rough. At this point, you might want to like coin out a thought steal just so you have a turn three play to make. Yeah, that's uh, not that out of the question. Chucky might want to rethink his whole let me just bring Priest for the hell of it strategy. Because this is one of the things with, with uh, Conquest is if one of your decks are weak, just one of your decks, then it can cost you a whole tournament. Oh man, it's yeah, it's so difficult. As we said this with Conquest, like you went 2 0 up with the first two decks, bringing something like Priest, it's it's really difficult to see how you get a win with it against a lot of different classes, and it can be such a liability that you just lose because you can't get a single win with it. Mm -hmm. He did put himself in the absolute best position, leaving it to last, winning two first. Um, but it's yeah, it's really hard to see Chucky even coming back from this really slow start. Goes to the Thought Steel, gets a BGH. That could be really useful. Uh, oh, wait, he already has Double Shadow or Death. He doesn't <laughs> really need it. Um, yeah, really not, those are actually not the greatest Thought Steals uh, because Cruel Taskmaster is not going to have much use either. Uh, maybe to help him trade up with something later on. 
But right now, I mean, what is he going to do here? He can throw, right now, probably his best play is just throw out BGH. Maybe throw a powered shield on it to make it a 4-4. A <laughs> like, that's the, that, I, that looks like his best play here. Shrinkmeister, not really an option. Um, or maybe it is. <laughs> I guess he thinks he might use the BGH at some point. Uh, what could you possibly use the BGH? Oh, okay, so BGH for Dr. Boom. Um, Shadow War Death, one Shadow War Death for Alex Straza, one for Grom, I guess. Maybe one for, one for Baron Geddon. One, yeah, I guess there's there's uses for all of them, but um, I mean, this doesn't even contest with the Armorsmith. That mind control, such a dead draw as well from the Power Word Shield. Like, he has so much garbage in his hand that you th there comes a point when you have so much garbage in your hand, you think, okay, I have to start drawing good cards now. And he still isn't at that point because he managed to draw mind control in turn four. Yeah. And 12 armor already from the warrior. This is really tough. Oh! That's well, not a bad draw. That's pretty good. Okay, now that he's, he, now that he's seen one... Uh, Acolyte of Pain. Acolyte of Pain is usually the card that you want to go for, uh, but there's a lot of good uh, Cabal Shadow Priest targets in uh, in Warrior. Armorsmith, Cool Taskmaster, Acolyte of Pain. He's also thinking, well, maybe I want to save that Cabal Shadow Priest later on for a Shrink Meister, maybe be able to pick up a Sludge Belcher with shrink, my second Shrink Meister and Cabal Shadow Priest, but he really can't afford to do that. This is yeah, his... Only real play. It's all he has at this point. I mean, all the options in the world for Ekta. He could run the Armorsmith into the Cabal, execute Sludge Belcher. He could completely ignore it and go for Shield Maiden. He can uh, develop Death Spite. Just, as I say, all the options in the world. So much armor that it doesn't really matter. Barely, barely makes a mark killing that Cabal Shadow Priest. This is rough. And Holy Nova, again, talking about dead draws. That's well, just Holy that's Nova, just the chip off two of the armor. There you go. Oh, that's like a dragon's breath, but worse. <laughs> a lot worse. Um... Oh, I guess... I guess Thought Steal? Yeah, he has maybe? some Thought Steal here. And then he'll have to throw out one of his cards because his hand will be full. So probably Thought Steal and then maybe th throw out the Big Game Hunter. Because Cruel Taskmaster would just... You could chip off more of the armor, but it would just play right into... Yeah, Thought Steal. This is really rough. Well, oh! Well, it gets a threat, so that's good. Yeah... But I mean, has a, he does actually have Cruel Taskmaster as well. Yeah. I was just going to say he doesn't pick up an activator, but he picked one up in his last one. He's just going to throw it the circle. Okay. Yeah. This uh, is probably the best choice, to be honest. That's fine. I was thinking Big Game Hunter, but again, Double Shadow or Death, Big Game Hunter. He will get to use all those. Yeah, this is. Well, again, lots of options for Agta. does have the Shield Maiden. Uh, has the Lotheb, Sludge Belcher, all feel pretty good. Even the Harrison Jones is not too bad here. I guess uh, Harrison Jones could potentially bait out a Shadow of Death as well. Which what? little little does Ekta know, Chucky's sitting on a pair of those bad boys. So even baiting out one. Double or the Golden Cool Taskmaster is an interesting card because it looks like he's in like a, a sandstorm. <laughs> or a really windy environment. And the, the way he does it, he just points and yells at someone. And it does damage to them and makes them stronger. So looking at the Sludge Belcher here, I like the 5 drop. Because you can armor up and just keep arming up and keep getting out so out of range that the Priest... I mean, there, people often compare the, the Warrior and the Priest and obviously the hero powers do similar things. But if a Warrior can get up to like 45, 50. The priest can only ever heal to 30, and that's... If it comes down to fatigue, that can make all the difference. Yeah, that's very true. Warrior versus priest. I once uh, I once DDoSed myself in a tournament, so I wouldn't have to cast warrior versus priest. <laughs> so the rumors go. I remember back in the day, 
Warrior versus Priest and Warrior versus Handlock were the probably two of the most common matchups. This is like pre GVG, a little bit yeah. before GVG came out. Um, like right smack dab in the middle of Max and GVG, which was just oh my goodness, back to back to back. A best of five series would last hours. Yeah. Just by itself, one best of five series. All right. If Chucky could hurry up and decide what he's going to do, that'd be great. He can cruel Taskmaster. He... Cruel Task execute, sure. And trade, yeah. He does have Light of the Naru uh, to create a creature, but it's going to be really tough because he'll never be able to use it on Cruel Taskmaster. Because it'll never be low enough for him to be able to use it and it still be damaged. Yeah. And there's going to be threat after threat after threat coming out for... I mean, he, even if Shield Maiden, then Shield Maiden, and then Alex Shaza comes out, Chucky actually has answers to all three of those. Shadow of Death, Shadow of Death, BGH. Which is ridiculous. But then there's Harrison and Lothab and Gromash and... <laughs> Baron and Sylvanas. He's going to kill it with a circle of healing. Oh, man. Sure. Okay. Does Chalky run Alkanize in this deck? I guess he must do. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure he does. Um, Light of the Naru without Alkanize is a little bit weird. I mean, of course, yeah, Light of the Naru is great on Injured Blade Master. Someone's a Light Warden and can put on pressure, but... Yeah. And he actually still holds on to that Death Bite charge. So he's not really Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I guess he's waiting for it to get a little more... He's waiting to, for it to use the execute, to proc the execute, because he doesn't have any other way in his hand besides just straight up face tanking something uh, to proc execute on a big creature. So, Yeah, this is really tough for Chalky. I'm, again, I go back to questioning the wisdom of this priest pick. It's such a difficult deck at this point. There are just so many three deck lineups where it's really hard to get a win with priest. And... If he just brought something like face i mean i know he's a big fan of the face hunter if he just brought face hunter he probably would have won the series by now yeah but at the same time it's still almost impossible to tell how this game's gonna end up because priests they just play so reactively so i mean he does have an answer to a lot of threats that are going to come out here he'll probably draw into more answers for the threats that are going to come out so it, well, there's the death. Even though the warriors managed to build up uh, 54 health total. 44. 44. Math, <laughs> there you go. 44 oh, there's health Dr. Total. Boom, so that's another target. So there, there are now twice as many targets for BGH and Shadow or Death as Chucky has remaining in his hand. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> this is pretty rough. So, Dr. Boom, is that a BGH or a Shadow Word Death? What do you think? I think it's a BGH. I think you should use the BGH while you can. Uh, because <clears throat> it's not as flexible. So you want to get it out of the way. But there's merit for both. Um, because you, you might want to save BGH for something a little more powerful. Uh, like Alex Straza. Because at this point in the game... With how slow paced it's been, you know that pretty much every card is going to be used. Yeah, pretty you, much. This game is most likely going to go to fatigue because both players have the answers, have all the answers. Oh man, you need to conserve your resources. And at this point, drawing might not be the best idea, just because if you know that's going to be a fatigue game, then you might want to just try and preserve your. Um, preserve having card advantage like opposite card advantage card advantage in a fatigue war which means you've drawn through less of your deck oh Ysera that's actually really risky though because if he plays Ysera which is usually a really great card against Breeze it gets mind controlled then you're in trouble because a lot of times you don't have a way to deal with that but he does have execute so if he played it here he'd sort of just be forcing Chalky to have it I can't think of any better Shrinkmeister Cabal targets in the entire game than Ysera. Yeah. So, sadly, Chucky doesn't have those two pieces, but uh, I, I literally don't think there is a better card that that combo works on. Yeah. I guess the uh, 
Is there a new fort? Well, I guess Mali Ghost, but hmm. probably Yasara. I always like the old dot steal Aldor Peacekeeper against Paladin, and then uh, Aldor Peacekeeper Cabal Shadow Priest Tyrion. That's true. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Um, we did see Sarah coming over to the priest side, and actually the priest starting to build up a board here. It's been very slow. Emerald Drake, that could be really useful as well. That's a pretty good pickup. It's a creature, and right now he's severely lacking strong creatures. <laughs> he has the Blade Master as well. You could uh, Blade Master Circle Drake, and that starts to look like a pretty scary board. <laughs> For the time being. We still haven't seen Shield Slams. Brawl. Brawl. <laughs> haven't seen both executes. He's still got to get through a lot. Um, he's thinking about what he wants to attack here and the follow play. Uh, he doesn't have Grom in his hand. Uh, usually you want to set up kills when you use Alex Charles in this matchup because going to fatigue is pretty dangerous. So using Alex Strauss prematurely sometimes isn't the right choice because by the time you draw into the combo, the priest might have healed it back up to full health, which negates the effect of Alex Straza overall. So before you use that card, you want to make sure that you do have um, that you do have some sort of way to combo Grom and Grom in your hand. And Nightmare yeah, is actually, actually a really great card because he can almost guarantee lethal if he gets like a Warwind effect plus Nightmare after Alex Straza's turn. Now, Sylvanas Shadowward Death? That's a combo. Yeah, I don't know if Harrison Jones is a card that you really want to steal, though. I wouldn't be That's too upset with just using Grom. That's true. I mean, it doesn't look like he has any way to deal with it at this point. You've seen both executes. Yeah. You could. You don't... You'd be able to chip off three of the armor. Uh, you can also you could also heal Grom back up to what seven health. Um, no, it'd be six health because you would take five. Um, Grom circle of healing him, and then he'd I was be almost say, impossible Grom... to deal with. Grom into Harrison, Light of the Naru circle no, you... draws way too many cards. <laughs> yeah, way too many cards. Yeah, but it does create a uh, sick Light Warden. He might actually sacrifice the Northshire cleric here. Hmm. I guess not. Okay, heals his face. Smart choice. It's vulnerable to shield slam in this situation. I actually wouldn't have been opposed to sacrificing in the Northshire Cleric and then using Circle of Healing to make the Grom healthier. I yeah, I personally would have gone with I would have sacked the Northshire and then Light of the Naru Circle and build a, a, a huge a big Light Warden as well. Yeah, uh, that, yeah, that's a good good play as well. I think that definitely would have been an option. But yeah, it's difficult when you have the North Shire and you're like, oh, I really want to draw lots of cards because that's really good. But also, I have like nine cards in my hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're seeing the Alex here and he does have uh, his Grom Nightmare, I guess. Yeah, but no way. Um, I guess he still has lethal with just Grom Nightmare and his Fire War Axe if his opponent doesn't heal up. Yeah. Exactly, but against Priest, you gotta think he's gonna heal. Yeah, he can just he, he light an arrow himself. Master. Yeah, he can light an arrow himself and then basically be out of Grom range for the rest of the game. Yeah. Um, so in this situation, hmm. what about Savannah's death here? No, because then you're the highest you can get yourself up to is 15 health, and you see Fire War Axe on the board. So. Yeah. That might be true. risky. He just use the death here. Yeah. So he might trade. I think he, he might try and get um give himself as much help. Ooh. Ah, okay. That's interesting. To be honest, I would have thrown in my Northshire cleric, light an art myself, used Shadow or Death, and then Holy Nova, just to get myself as high health as possible to reduce the chance. So he has 12 damage here. Um, okay. We're just going to see, yeah. Now we're going to see Sylvana Shadow or Death. Most likely. <laughs> yeah, Sylvana Shadow or Death on Sylvanas is pretty good. Yeah, but at the same time, once again, he 
if he does that, he doesn't have any mana left over to heal himself back up. So he's going to be at 14. Uh, now that's still pretty risky. Um, has he used both Cruel Taskmasters, though? I don't think so. I think he's only used one. Because we've, we've seen uh, two Cruel Taskmasters, but one was a Thought Stolen one on the side of Chalky, and the other one was used to, I believe, buff up the Acolyte of Pain earlier on. So Yeah, I think so. So I don't think we've seen the second one here. Um, but he's actually going to go ahead and uh, just clear off the board and save the Sylvana Shadow or Death. Heal himself out of out of range. Yeah, I think that's fair. And the okay. Sludge Belch is a pretty good answer as well. Yeah. So he's he's gotten to that armor. He's put him at 26 health, and he's in actually a pretty good position. He's got he's still a Shadow or Death left. Um, he's still got bodies left. He's got Auchanized Circle, which is a good way to clear things off. And uh, this Shield Slam could be an activator for Grom with Nightmare to push in for 15 damage. Uh, no, he's, gonna, he's actually going to use it to clear off the Light Warden. So still no activator for Gromish yet. And he's starting to run into cards. This could end up being pretty problematic for Ekta. Yeah, this is tough. Thorison coming down. Okay. Huh. You need to clear off this Black Knight, though. Yeah, you really do. So how's he going to do this? Um, he could... Oh man, this is rough. He would have to organize circle here in order to clear it off the board. Uh, but if he organize, yeah, if he organize circles, he'd want to heal his own face before he played organize because he's going to end up trading the cruel taskmaster in either way. Um, and he wants to make sure that he heals out of range. Oh wow, this is a bold, bold play. Yeah. It's definitely bold. He has to be very aware of his health, but oh, he thought about it. I think he's probably going to decide, yeah, he's going to go with the Alkanai. Okay, he's going to get the best of both worlds here. He's going to be able to play the Emperor, but this is still risky. We're an activator away from lethal here with Gromish. Yep, so let's see. Death Spire. Death Spire. All right, oh, okay. Man. So it's still going to be a couple turns before he's able to set that up. I mean, he could like go face with the the um, fire war axe. He wants to not kill that Akanai. So if he goes face with shadow war axe, develops the death bite, and then goes face, he could kill him over a couple turns. But it would mean he would have to not run into any taunts, no sludge vouchers. Um. Wow. Yeah, so he, gonna, he wants to get it out of turn earlier. Yeah, this is smart. I'll tell you, this this is so crazy that this game is this particular game has been going on so long that uh, it's actually outlasted the Twitch delay. Oh wow. <laughs> So the current the game we're currently casting ten minutes ahead is now being broadcast on Twitch. That's how far that's how long these priest versus warrior matches can go. They're going so long that we've gone back in time. <laughs> we've doubled back on ourselves. It's all time. Yeah. Okay, so this is a tough play because he want he needs to be able to remove his own No, I don't think there's any way out of this. He has to trade both creatures in. No, he can't win. He's dead. Yeah. This is really difficult. But yeah, it looks like Ekta's going to be able to pull this one out. A war of attrition between Priest and Warrior. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so getting that Despite out now and pairing that with the Lothab means that there is just no way that uh, Chalky can get through all this. Yeah, that's going to be the, the great play that's oh, going to be with that, that Lothar combo. And he's actually got 
a couple overkill as well. So really fantastically played by Ekta and uh, calculating that he needed to play the Despite and get it out there on the same turn that he played Lilithab. Um, just really smart stuff from him. And he actually drew the cool Taskmaster anyway. So regardless of what Chaki did that turn, even if Lilithab wasn't played, there was no way he could have gotten out of range because he actually had 21 damage overall. So that's a big combo that you can't really account for. So, yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that was a, that was an, an, a long game. Uh, certainly, uh, one we had to. Well, we all we all made it through together. Where am I'm I? Pleased, I'm pleased and proud of all of us. We got through that. But it's uh, it's now two two. So it's going to be the Druid of Ekta against the Priest of Chaki as my cat chases her tail in the background. Um, I've never known a cat chase its tail before. This one does. It's cat, bizarre. Cat thinks it's a dog. <laughs> uh yeah it's kind of bizarre sorry about that you you guys didn't see that but during that last game my cat i had to pick up my cat uh so everyone was enjoying my cat uh if you heard her if you heard her then uh congratulations you won a prize <laughs> um so chalky still has yet to find him with this priest and ekta's last deck is i believe a druid um since he won with the rogue and one with the warrior so this this last matchup is going to be druid versus priest and the winner of this one does move on. And this is a really rough position for Chalky. The momentum is on Ekta's side. Uh, that's a long, grueling matchup and a tough matchup to lose if you're in Chalky's position because that's just so much momentum. His, his, his sails have just been deflated. And it's just, oh man. This is when what we you, said, that Priestess can be such a liability. It really is. One week deck and it can cost you a series in Conquest. You have to make sure that you're that you know and you're confident that your decks are good and they can take a victory against anything. And uh, this matchup is a little bit more of a toss-up. Um, but Druid can still pull out some big victories. A lot of times it's hard for Priest to play around combo, especially if an early Shade gets out and they don't have an answer to deal with it. Like, Auk and I circle right on time. It's going to be really tough. And we've seen Chalky just not have the greatest of starts. And it's it's really hard to put yourself in a position as a priest to make sure that you're playing around combo every turn after turn nine, if a druid can put out some early pressure. Absolutely. And uh, we see the shade coming out early for the druid, which is good. Uh, Shrinkmeister for Chaki. We didn't see a second Shrinkmeister in that game. So I guess maybe he's only running one. Mm, it's possible. Uh, we didn't get through his whole deck as well. So uh, we got pretty deep into the deck, but uh, the preset that he was running on a stream the other day had double shrink meister because he really wanted okay. to to pair it with like shadow madness and uh, cabal shadow priest but i'm not sure he may have cut it since then i know chalky even though he likes to advertise himself as an aggro player and a very fast player i know when he turns off his stream at night he always just play tests for hours goes to and bed hours dreaming of control warrior of control warrior and and of priest and how he can tech his priest so he can't fool us Got a little picture of Anduin above his bed. Yeah. Uh, Injured Blade Master and Circle of Healing. Getting creatures out early to match against the, the, the pressure of Druids is one of the best things that you can do. Uh, the one thing that he has to that he has to think about though is does he want to take the risk? Can he play an injured blade master here and wait for his second injured blade master to come out and get both circle of healing? Oh, the innervate's great here. Innovate Druid of the Claw, Innovate Sludge Belcher. Waiting on the Circle of Healing is so greedy, though. Yeah, just a Wrath would take out this Injured Blade Master, which is yeah. never something you want to trade for. But so lucky. there's a potential that his greed might pay off. Uh, because if... Okay, no. He's uh, going to coin swipe. I was going to say that it feels like a really inefficient use of swipe, but when you can stop that, those Blade Masters can get so out of hand if they get circled and then Power Word Shield... You know, we've we've all seen the four eleven blade masters. Yeah, it's not something that you can afford to happen. And swipe isn't really going to get that much more value against um, against priests. It's not like they're going to have a lot of little creatures for you to clean up. So, uh, I, I like the risk by Chalky. It's something that you sort of have to do, uh, especially when you're on the ropes like this. Ooh. He does throw the Pyromancer, but he doesn't have enough spells or enough mana to be able to take it out. I was interested in my cat. You can just, Holy uh, Nova. 
The cat just pulled a coat hanger off the sofa on top of herself and hit herself in the head. That's a cat for you. Because cats are smart. But uh, Holy Nova to take out that, that Belcher again, that's... Doesn't feel like the most efficient use of the removal, but again, it's good to get rid of that shade before it gets out of hand. Yeah, this is definitely true. And now he's going to be able to play, most likely, play Thorsan on curve here and have it not be too threatened. Yep, not too bad. Which is pretty good. Um, other option here would be to play Akanai Soul Priest and be able to cleanly take out, out this uh, Druid of the Claw with the hit hit and the Akanai Soul Priest. But when you can play Thorsan like this on curve, uh, it forces your opponent to deal with it and also will allow him to make a little bit better combos later on. Five mana Cabal Shadow Priest is a pretty big deal. Yeah, let's talk about the Violet Teacher, which we're going to see here. Yeah. It's a uh, Teacher Druids, and very kind of classic archetype of uh, Druid that we've maybe not seen as much. But Ekta trying to have a, make a comeback here. Yeah, this... Ah, I don't know if it's... This Violet Teacher could just be thrown in here for a little bit of extra value. I'm not sure if he's running like a token Druid. Like Power of the Wild and things like that. Power of the Wild, yeah. But it, it's definitely possible. Uh, we have not seen a very large majority of his deck, so. You can see Pyromancer Thought Steel to finish off this 4 1 and be able to trade with the Violet oh. Teacher. That's, those are really great draws, actually. Yeah. From, from Thought Steel. It's, uh, I guess that'll do. It's not too bad. And he's just going to play the Soul Priest here. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't think there's much a reason not to. Um, don't he'd be floating mana if he just healed up his injured blade master, which I don't think he wants to do. Uh, th this way, it's vulnerable to wrath, but uh, putting more pressure on the board, usually against druid, is the way to go. Uh, because druids, they're the thing that druids struggle the most with is coming back on board when they're behind, because uh, druids are really good at ramping up and putting up big creatures early taking board control and then holding on to it. Uh, but if a priest manages to get it, sometimes they'll just never give it up against a druid because every big threat that a druid plays from now on, the priest is just going to be able to deal with it because they have a stronger board. Yeah, exactly. So he's going to clear the Pyromancer and just go for the Harrison Jones here, which is pretty weak if there were a circle to combo with the Alcani, but it also trades with the Injured Blade Master, mm -hmm. which you can, you can't heal up up to above five, I guess. Yeah, I would just trade here with the injured blade master. Oh no, no, keeper the grove and then uh, pop the heal onto the faces. Uh, much stronger play. Yeah. yeah, that's. And he's going to be able to develop even bigger of a board. Basically, he's in the same position that he was last turn, except he's got a bigger board now, and he's actually sitting on a next turn lethal. So yeah, this is pretty crazy. This is really, really good for the priest. Chucky's in a really good position here. <laughs> Chucky might manage to find a one with priest. Oh my goodness. My yeah, have. He... This is like backwards day. He's got to win another three series though if he wants to win this tournament, yeah. and uh, I don't know if how if he's gonna be able to get this lucky again. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's me. really kicking himself. Uh, the sludge Bulger is gonna stop lethal, but only for the time being, and um, he can actually steal the Cabal Shadow Priest. Or sorry, Recombobulator is lethal, right? No, it's one off. No, he'd have to find a way to take the Sludge Belcher before he recombobulated it. Does recombobulate only work in friendly minions? Yeah. Oh, that's a um, shame. I haven't, I haven't played with that card enough. You know, can... I was thinking you could recombobulate the Sludge Belcher and yeah. then not, get something that isn't a taunt. Mm -mm. My bad. Nope, but he can uh, Cabal Shadow Priest the Keeper of the Grove, which is one of the best targets that you can Cabal Shadow Priest. And I mean, it's still set him up for next turn, though. He can even... Uh, Recombobulator, one of the Keeper of the Groves, because Keeper of the Grove is one of the weaker four, one of the weakest four cost yeah. minions. So he's bound to get something stronger, but there's really no need for that. That's kind of just for style points. Well, that's it, right? That's game over. Yeah, yeah. Well play comes out in the conceited Chucky. <laughs> a a perfect win, win priest. from 30 health. With, doesn't take any damage and for wins. So Chucky wins this final series three to do this final marathon series. Uh, I think this has definitely been our longest of the day. It's the first time we've gone to five games. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, this has been pretty crazy. Yeah, and I mean, that Priest deck still has a losing record. It's still got one win to its two losses. Um, 
but it's don't celebrate yet, Chucky. Yeah, don't celebrate yet. He's still got a long way to go in the tournament. He's got two really strong decks, and then he has Priest. I, I mean, joking aside, Priest is strong. It just uh, the lineup that Ekta brought was actually really good in countering Priest, with the exception of Druid. But uh, Ekta, he played well, but unfortunately, he's not going to be able to get that big tournament breakthrough that breakthrough that he's been waiting for. I'm sure he'll be cheering on his teammate Oleg tomorrow. Uh, also from Punchline Esports Club uh, when we see him play. But uh, again, a big congratulations to Chucky for moving on to that quarterfinal round. Absolutely. So that is us done for the day. We've done our four games for today. We're going to come back tomorrow for the uh, the last four games of the round of 16 and for the top eights. We're going to have eight series tomorrow and it's going to be starting at uh, 2.30 Central European time, which is 8.30 Eastern time or 5.30 TJ time over in the West Coast. 5 30 a.m. PST for all of pretty you. Pretty rough. PST guys out there. It's pretty rough, but there's going to be some great games tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to waking up early. And you guys should definitely be looking forward to waking up early as well. Yeah. And make sure you get here early because actually, I think the first game is going to be one that's really, really going to want to see Tides of Time versus D2. Two very, very accomplished North American players. Uh, players who achieved a lot last year, but maybe haven't had as much of an impact in 2015 so far. So they're going to be really looking to, to carve a niche. And uh, we also have Tice versus Show, which is the third game we're going to have tomorrow. And I'm really looking forward to that one. Show is a player who's really on form at the moment, doing well in the KPL when the Xfinity tournament got to the second group stage of Seat Story Cup. We also have uh, Forsen versus Oleg, and we have Muzzy versus Gara as well. So. Uh, some really great games coming up and then obviously we're going to have uh chucky versus hyped and jab versus dog in the round of eight so <laughs> just some incredible games coming up tomorrow tj it's uh gonna be an, an amazing tournament going forward yeah uh definitely and of course big shout outs to um king Win. big shout outs to child's play as well uh fantastic charity and of course all the donations that are being made uh, you can check down below in the description we'll go to child's play which is of course that organization that does uh, buy consoles and games for for kids in hospitals that are sick so it makes their time in hospitals or um, their last days uh, a lot more enjoyable so if you guys want to contribute go ahead and head down there of course exclamation mark packs in the chat spam it get your exclamation mark packs out there king was giving away 20 packs so the commit that command will give you uh the the link that you can go to to try and enter for those packs so i'm going to try and log into all of my all 40 of my alternate Twitch username accounts, go and spam exclamation mark packs on all of them in chat right now. Just I thought you only did that chance. on Reddit, TJ. I thought you only did that on Reddit. Nope. It's a Twitch as well. Okay, Twitch as well. Everywhere. Fair enough. And you can also, all this weekend, you can get 5% off at the Kingwood store uh, with the code 4CHARITY. Pick yourself up a copy of uh, GTA 5, Mortal Kombat, uh, Pillars of Eternity, lots of great new games out right now. So pick yourself up something. Uh, get them the, the lowest possible prices at King Gwen and get 5% off as well. What more can you ask for? Uh, you can even use that to buy more Hearthstone packs if you want on the King Gwen store. So uh, yeah, make sure you do that. But we're going to be back tomorrow at, as I said, 2.30 Central European time uh, with more games. I think that is all from us. TJ, have you enjoyed yourself your first day of the King Gwen for Charity Tournament? Yeah, it's been really great. It was a sh shorter day today, um, but really looking forward to the rest of the weekend. It should be a fantastic tournament. Absolutely. We'll see you tomorrow for the rest of the round of 16 and the round of 8. Thank you very much for watching. For myself, Calm Leslie, him, TJ, Zoom, with QT Sanders. We'll see you tomorrow for the Kingwin for, for Charity Easter Edition 2015.